Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel and my first ever tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to see how we can draw this image with ball, just one ball pen. Step by step, we are going to learn how we can replicate all the shadows and highlights with a ball pen using different different shading methods. So let's begin with this. So to draw this portrait, we need a Brusto Artist Drawing Archival Quality book or Strathmore Bristol Weldom Surface. Both the links are in my description. We can use either of these. These both the sheets are textured sheets. You can, as you can see, in textured sheets, we get a realistic effect because we can add more details and we have more control. For this, I'm using a BIC big ball pen. In the next step, I'm going to explain you all how you can determine which ball pen is accurate to use which ball pen is perfect to use it use for sketching so let's begin with the sketching so basically a, a ball pen you have to check some things before commencing with the shading part first you have to randomly scribble on a paper and check whether your pen is working or not so I'll just scribble on it. Now that I know my pen is working, my next step would be throw some random strokes and check whether I'm getting some ink leaks or, or not. Ballpoint sketching is all about throwing strokes from left to right, from one position to other position. So you have to make sure you get smooth outcome with very little pressure, with very less pressure. You have to make sure you're getting even shading. The two techniques that we use in ballpoint sketching is hatching and cross hatching. So let's see how we, we can uh, do a hatching. Hatching is basically throwing strokes from left to right, from darker to lighter areas. So let's see how do we do that. So basically hatching is all about throwing strokes from left to right position. The more closer your strokes will be, the more smooth and realistic shading you will get out of it. So you can see one side of the left side is dark and right side of the stroke is lighter. That is why in our portrait, we start from the left part or that is from the all the darker areas and we move towards the lighter areas. The more closer your strokes are, the more smooth the shading will look like. The more far the strokes are, the more hatches and strokes will be visible in your portrait. So it's completely, it completely depends on you whether you have to make it realistic or creative. The second method is cross hatching. Cross hatching is basically first we do simple hatching. After doing the simple hatching, we change up the position of the paper and do cross hatching on it cross hatching is used to do finishing to increase the contrast or give a very refined look to your portraits these two techniques are the only method that is used to sketch with a ball pen so let's start with the portrait this image i'm quickly sketching the entire thing with a grid method the classic grid method to get the uh, outlines accurate. Here you can see I'm done with the outline. Now I will start with the darkest area. First, I'll be targeting all the darker areas in my portrait and slowly sketching all the dark areas first. Then I will move towards the lighter areas. So first I'm covering the hair, which is the darkest area. Slowly sketching from one position to other. So you can see back and forth movement is applied over here. To explain this in depth and in less time, I have used real time version and time lapse both. So you can go back and see the real time version again if you want to know more about it. So you can see for darker areas like hairs, eyebrows, eyelashes, I'm just scribbling in backward and forward movement. So first I'll be covering the darker areas of hairs from both the directions and I'll slowly develop highlights in between. So 
so we are done with the hairs now i'll be adding some more finishing where there are gaps in between because you don't want to leave gaps in between your shades similarly i'll cover eyebrows eyelashes and all the darker areas in the portrait when you cover a small area like eyebrows and eyelashes make sure your movement is slow so you don't spread ink on the skin textures over here as you can see i'm not building one face feature completely and then moving to the next face feature i always use collective building method that is you collectively build the entire face you don't complete one face feature and then move on to next one for example as you can see i'm doing one part of eyebrows and then moving to the next one then coming back and completing it this is called as collectively building the entire face instead of focusing one face feature as you can see over here i did the eyebrows eyelashes and now i'm covering the darker areas of the face here comes in picture simple hatching as you can see i'm simply hatching my throwing my strokes and covering the darker areas very smoothly two things you have to consider over here always remember you have to leave less gaps between two strokes if you leave more strokes with no more gaps between the strokes you will end up getting not so smooth shading second thing is your pressure the more practice you do on these things the more your pressure control will be in your hands good thing about a textured sheet is you will be able to control your pressure even more first we have to shade the entire thing smoothly with simple hatching and then we do cross hatching as you can see over here i changed the direction and now i'm giving cross hatching two reasons why we give cross hatching is to increase the darkness and give a finished look to the skin texture it totally depends on what kind of skin texture you are sketching if you are sketching the darker areas as you can see i am putting a little bit more pressure first step will be simple hatching and then after simple hatching is done i'm going to do some so cross hatching and give the finished look to the skin texture every darker areas of the portrait is covered first if you compare with the reference image i'm just leaving out all the lighter areas and first focusing on all the darker areas slowly i'm going to build the texture of darker areas and then move towards the lighter sections connectivity between two stroke is very important over here you can see after some time i came back to this part of the face and started shading but i'm trying to make a connection between two strokes i'm trying to make sure they are as close as possible and there's a connection between the strokes also one thing that you should notice i'm decreasing the darkness of the shading as i go in the upwards direction that is i now need lighter areas so my pressure will be less you can see this is cross hatching this is the zoomed version as you can see how i'm throwing strokes okay now this is the actual version now again i'm going to do simple hatching completing the entire area with simple hatching and then giving the finishing with the cross hatching now let's do the lighter sections as all the darker areas are covered with lighter areas you have to apply very less pressure like you have to hover on the page but no pressure is applied by your hand practice is on the rough page that is throwing strokes without applying any pressure and then go on with the actual portrait connectivity between connectivity between two face features that is chin area and cheeks area cheek and nose nose and eyes eyes and forehead and so on is very important 
over here you can see i'm trying to balance the darkness as well the amount of darkness i've applied in the cheek section is the same amount of darkness i will apply on the chin area as well doing this will give you even skin tone realistic effect as well over here i applied the simple hatching now i'm using cross hatching to give darkness and finished look good thing about doing a cross hatching is that we achieve two things very easily some artists don't do cross hatching and do with simple hatching that's also a good thing but if you're aiming for realism then you should always go for both the techniques as you go in the upwards direction try to decrease your contrast try to decrease the pressure go very slow go very patient the entire portrait took me almost three hours to complete with multiple breaks every time i finished a milestone i covered a milestone i used to take a break take a set back and think how it looks like then start with a uh, start again with it never cover the lighter areas first you can leave the lighter area for the end first you can cover all the darker areas then slowly move towards lighter area the technique is very simple the tools are very simple the only thing that you require over here is practice patience and knowing how to use a pen in ballpoint sketching you can go for any brand not just bic big ball pen you can go with any ball pens but you have to make sure how the pen is working you have to give some trial whether the pen is good or not over here you can see i'm drawing the lips while drawing the lips the pressure would be little bit more because it should be darker as compared to the skin textures meanwhile you can see i'm not just developing lips but i'm also going back on other skin textures like jawline and cheek section and giving some finishing to it this is also called as collectively building that you your concentration should not be only on lips but you have to keep checking and keep going back into the skin textures that you have already drawn while drawing teeth you have to be very careful it looks almost white but you have to give a little bit shade to give realistic effect to it first again i'm drawing the darker teeth teeth that is in the shadows and then i'll go to the lighter sections now doing the upper part of the lips again i will do simple hatching and then do cross hatching on it simple hatching and again cross hatching make sure you give shades to your teeth don't leave it white or it will look weird similarly i'm going to use all these techniques to draw nose forehead and cheek section key to realism is achieving darker areas and lighter areas accurately for any art medium if you achieve darker areas and lighter areas accurately you will get accurate portrait so you can see i'm giving emphasis to giving dark areas accurately and lighter areas as well now comes in the one of my favorite part favorite part is cheek section and the forehead part over here you have to very very patient while doing this you have to keep two things in your mind is that you have to make a connection between the darker part and lighter part also you have to make a very smooth transition it shouldn't look like you started there's a gap between darker and lighter part like some area is very light and some area is very dark there sh there should be a very smooth transition of dark to light over here i'm trying to achieve that transition my first basic step is simple hatching and then slowly i'll keep shading it but maintaining the darkness and lightness both the values in a very smooth way there shouldn't be a drastic change of lighter areas there should be some darker areas as well
So over here, I'm almost done. As you can see, I've left some gaps in between over there in the cheek section, also in the chin area, also on the nose and many areas. I've left some gap for the highlights. Now comes the lightest part that is the forehead. Simple hatching and then cross hatching. Now comes the last part that is the neck part. In the neck part as well, I'm going to use both the techniques and complete the hatching process. We are finally done with the skin texture. Now this is a zoomed version on how I'm approaching towards the jewels. So this is pretty much scribbling, you know, I'm scribbling on paper. Good thing about this paper is you can see it's a grainy texture. It's not very smooth. So I have a very good control as compared to a smooth texture. I have a very good control on this paper. So I'm, I'm going to scribble. I'm going to doodle how we used to doodle all those designs. I'm going to doodle these designs and draw the jewels. This is pure doodling. The doodling which we used to do on diaries and notebooks in free time, that's what pretty much I'm doing. First, I'm scribbling some darker jewels and then I'm adding some shadows. After that, I'll doodle all the other details. Make sure you don't just leave, do the doodle and leave it. You have to give some shades in between. All right, next we are going to do, do some finishing and start with the fabrics part. This is a real time version of how doodling looks like. It's just drawing some random circles and scribbling on it. We are done with jewels. Now I'm going to define the area of the fabric that I'm drawing is blur. So as you can see, I'm just defining random, random lines and random boxes. It's actually engraved. It's actually written over there, but it is blur, right? So when you're sketching a blurred section, you don't have to add details. Just add random boxes and give shady shades and highlights, darker areas and lighter areas. Define both the things and leave it. First, again, I will do all the darker areas and then I'll give shading to lighter sections. While giving shading to the fabrics, make sure you maintain the lighter areas and darker areas as well, which means when you doodle a particular area, you have to give some random scribbles, random shades to it. This is the real time version of how it looks like. And this is a time lapse version. Doodling, shading in between, shading the darker areas, shading the lighter areas. Again, I'm going to scribble those designs. If something is blurred, if any design is blurred, you don't have to draw them, but you can just do some random scribbles and shade on it. Here, I'm giving some volume. I'm giving some shades to the details. Now I'm going to use simple hatching to sketch the entire thing. After that, I'll be using cross hatching to increase the darkness and to give the finished look to it. Here I'm almost done with the blurred section of the fabric. We will now start with the detailed section that is the right section of the fabric. One thing that you have to keep in mind while drawing the detail section with ball pens, make sure you draw all those designs accurately. To draw accurately, you don't have to shade the designs. Instead, you can doodle it. It is a very fun part and one of my most favorite part while sketching any portrait. Here, I'm doing some random scribbles, random strokes to draw that kind, kind of fabric. And I'll give multiple layers to give the accurate contrast to it. Meanwhile, I'm also sketching inside of the skin texture as well. This is also one good example of collective building where you have to create connections between your fabrics and skin textures. That is while drawing fabrics, make sure you also focus on the skin textures. This is pure doodling and giving some shades in between. The entire process will be divided into doodling and shading in between. 
here i'm not gonna shade inside the details that is i'm not gonna give a little bit of shading as i gave in the blurred section why because i want these designs to stand out in my portrait it should look attractive to give attractive look i leave the gaps as it is now i'm I'm going to write the entire engravings instead of make, making some random shapes. I'm going to write it. I'm going to all doodle all the designs and then I'll simply fill the gaps in between with random scribbles. This process is very easy and very fun part as well. The more patiently you fill gaps in between, the more good your details will look like. Make sure you always wipe your tip of the pen after every 15 to 20 minutes. It might get ink leaks if you don't do it. Now we are creating highlights with a white gel pen. This is Unisigno white gel pen. Link is in my description. So this is used basically to create highlights, extra highlights in your portrait to make your portrait look more attractive. We are finally done with this portrait, guys. And I'm really satisfied with how it turned out. See you guys in next tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and comment on your views and how this was tutorial, how I can make it more better. You can also join my workshop. Head to my Instagram link to know more. Every month I do workshops on colors and portraits. See you guys in the next video.